Mike the Greek in the Film Lab here, and this is installment 505 of the Substream.com series of videos within which we provide you with all of the accurate, guaranteed, best handicap Oscar pool picks for 2012. We've let you know what 22 of the 24 eventual winners are going to be, and for the final two, Best Director and Best Picture, we decided to let you in behind the scenes and see how the decision-making process goes. Like when you were a kid and you went to the butcher, and you got to watch the butcher push the horse's face and cut off ass into the industrial shredding machine and eventually into the sausage hose. Last year, we figured out in advance what the best picture was going to be using statistical analysis, pattern recognition, data and past life regression, and our math brains. Let's see if we can do that again to figure it out for this year. Last year, in advance of the awards, we were able to predict accurately that the King's Speech was going to win the Best Picture Award because it had every single statistically significant characteristic that our research was able to pull as being valuable out of the past 25 years' worth of Best Picture wins. It was a film with a short, snappy title of three words or less. It was a period film like 68% of the past 25 winners. It was about royalty or a president, like 36% of the past winners. It had uh, a British people. It was about British people and it had British actors. That's also very important considering 56% of the past 25 years with the winners had British people as a director, actor, or character. It was about a person that had a handicap, in this case a stutter, and it was about, in some way, War. Bingo, bango, boombo, banga, dinga, dongo. There you go. There's your winner. Can we use this analysis to predict this year's winner? Of course we can. So here we go. From my notes, the artist. You got a snappy title, and you got yourself a period piece. The blanks on the rest. The descendants. Well, it's got a two word title, but it doesn't really have much of a period piece thing, royalty or a president, no British people, no handicaps, and no wartime. Extremely loud and incredibly close, on the other hand, wins because it has a British director, it's got a character with a handicap to overcome, and it is more or less about war being about the attacks on September 11th. Moving on to The Help. That's a movie with a short title that took place in the past. Hugo, also a short title, also in the past. However, it features British actors. Midnight in Paris, well, it has a short title, and I'm going to argue that it's not a period piece, as I'm pretty convinced that the main character was hallucinating rather than actually traveling back through time. Now, near the bottom of the list, we have Moneyball, which has itself a snappy title, and not much else, The Tree of Life, which is a period piece, and not much else, and finally, War Horse. This thing really kicks it out of the park, considering this is not a well-filled-in matrix. You got yourself here a snappy title, you got yourself a period piece, you got yourself some British characters and actors, and you have yourself a wartime story. Nothing's really knocking it out of the park, and that's not too surprising considering that 2011 was a weirder mix back than the knapsack that a puma and a vegan used to go grocery shopping. Right off the bat, it looks like we can eliminate the descendants, we can eliminate Midnight in Paris, we can eliminate Moneyball, we can eliminate the Tree of Life. All of these are one aspect films. And we gotta concentrate on what's got multiple factors. The War Horses, the Hugos, the Extremely Louds, the Helps, and the Artists. Nothing's really standing out though. Nothing's really dominating the way that the King's Speech did last year. Which is why we have to go deeper into the statistical analysis. There's a twist this year. Everybody always kind of assumed that they knew exactly how homogenous the group of voters that is the Academy was. We pictured kind of an old white guy, pretty much. But thanks to the work of the LA Times, who claimed that they've identified 89% of the Academy by name, we know exactly how white, how old, and how male they are. And it's really white, really male, and really old. In fact, 94% white, 77% male, with an average age of 62. These are 5,000 more or less old white dudes. With that in mind, we went back and identified a factor in the past 25 years of Best Picture winners. We call on that factor the W-O-A-M factor. And what is that? That's whether or not the film's protagonist was a white, older adult male. We found that this was an extremely powerful predictor. So let's see how it goes on this year's nominees. The artist, bingo. Extremely loud and incredibly close. This is an arguable bingo because the way that the script in this film is written, it's almost like Tom Hanks is the protagonist of the film from beyond the grave, helping his autistic son to unravel a mystery. 
Other than that, though, Hugo loses and Warhorse loses. And in fact, this is such a powerful predictor. 80% of the past 25 Best Picture winners has had a protagonist that's a white, older adult male. And it gets to the point where if you don't have a womb in your film, you're pretty much out of the running. So now we're down to two, the artist and extremely loud and incredibly close. What separates these two films? Well, this one got some British people with some handicaps, and this one got a snappy title. Which is more important? As it turns out, it's the title. Having a three word or less title is an 88% accurate predictor of victory in the best picture category. 88% of the past 25 films had short snappy titles. And I appreciate what you tried to do here by putting in the ampersand to cut that down from five words to four, but four is still more than three. So I'm sorry for extremely loud and incredibly close, because the artist is your 2012 Best Picture winner. So now that we know who's gonna win Best Picture, let's talk about who's gonna win Best Director. Weirdly enough, we're not gonna link these two predictions together, because as it turns out, there's one extremely effective predictor for the Academy Award for Best Directing, and that is the Directors Guild of America Award for Best Directing. In fact, since 1950, over 60 years ago, there's only been six instances in which the person that won the award for the Director's Guild for Best Directing did not win the award at the Academy Awards. And in two of those cases, the person wasn't even nominated for an Oscar, so there you go. Only four in over 60 years. That's extreme accuracy. So who won this year's Director's Guild of America Award for Outstanding Achievement in Direction? A guy named Michelle Hasnavicious, who directed a movie called The Artist. So there you go, the final two awards. Best Picture and Best Director. The Artist and Michelle has an ambitious. It's not even really a competition. You can watch the Oscars if you want, but we already and you already know who's gonna win, thanks to the power of statistical analysis and pattern recognition. Thanks for joining us this week to listen to my picks for your Oscar pool. It's been a pleasure saying them with my mouth to you, and I hope that you enjoy them. If you think that you're smarter than me and want to take me on and try and win a Blu-ray player, some Blu-rays, cookies, and an autographed picture of me, come join our contest on our website, thesubstream.com. Enjoy the Oscars on Sunday and follow us on Twitter or the Facebook or on our website. It's really cool. <laughs>